Greetings and welcome to Pinball Help. Mike here. Uh, it's been a while since I've done an instructional video and I thought I might because, you know, we're always learning and it's been many, many years since I did a video where I desoldered stuff and I've learned quite a lot since then and I've got my technique a little bit more refined. So I thought I would do a short video on proper way to desolder components off of the circuit board. In this case, I'm working on, a, this is a Atari Star Wars soundboard. You can actually see the old caps barfed on the board. You can see the, the damage they did. And I've been removing them and then cleaning that with 99% alcohol and replacing the caps. I'm down to like the last cap on this board. I thought, oh, I should do a, I should do a video on this. So my desoldering iron of choice is the Hacko 808. Um, turn everything on. Um, this is really just um, a lovely unit. It's, I think it's discontinued now, and there's a newer model that's available. But it sucks everything into this little thing here. It's got these nice little tips. And it works. It works very, very well. I'm very pleased with it. As long as you just keep it clean and you use proper techniques, you won't run into any problems with this. So let's talk a little bit about what it is that you're doing when you're desoldering. You're, to remove a component, you need to obviously heat up the old solder and melt it and then suck it out. Now there's different kinds of techniques you can use. You can use a solder sucker where you heat it up and, and it's a spring-loaded thing and it creates a quick vacuum and sucks stuff up. That'll work too. Um, the key though, there's a certain technique that you want to use. First off, when you're desoldering, you don't want to work you want to remove these pads, right? But you don't want to work horizontal like that because gravity is going to be working against you. If you're trying to desolder now, sometimes you may not have any choice. It's just the easiest way if you're, you know, you only have two hands and you, if you're, especially if you're using, say, uh, a manual desoldering thing, you heat, you got, the board has to be sitting in a particular position. But for using the desoldering gun, I like to use it vertically uh, or even lean it sometimes depending upon it just makes it easier to work on, right? So another technique I use now, I've desoldered half of this capacitor already, right? Um, sometimes there's a there's a number of different techniques you can use. If you're if you're desoldering delicate components like integrated circuits that are on the board, uh, sometimes it may actually be better to use a small little set of clippers and clip at least one side off. And then slowly work the pins because I like to I like to remove the pin while I've got the desoldering iron going and it's heated the area up because one of the most frustrating things when you're using a desoldering gun is you know a lot of times there's solder on the top and the bottom of the board and if you heat it up and then you hit the gun and it sucks it and then you think you got everything and you remove it and you look up and you got a little bit of solder on the top and sometimes on an integrated circuits it's really stuck up in there you can't even get to it. So I like to um, heat it up and try to remove the component while it's still hot. That way I don't run the risk of, you know, not being able to get the thing out. Then you have to fiddle with it, use a soldering iron and all that kind of stuff. So what I'll do for these capacitors, like with this guy right here, he was, he was right in like that. So what I did was I used a little pair of... Uh, forceps like this little and when I got oh it's magnet magnetized when when both ends were in I clipped this onto that right and then I held this up and I held the board up with the same hand and I was applying a little bit of reverse pressure on those forceps then I took my desoldering gun and I identified it and Here's, here's the trick with this, right? You don't just stick it on there and hit the suction. You stick it on there and you wiggle it a little bit and you look until you see it liquefy the solder very well. If, um, you, if you do it prematurely, you'll suck part of it out and then you'll ruin your condu conductivity to the rest of the um, hardened solder and you won't be able to get to it. So you want to make sure that you hold it on long enough for the heat to transfer through the whole part including if there's any on the other side. Once it's fully liquefied, then you, then you hit it 
and you wiggle a little bit at the same time while you're pulling and if you do it right this will come out and you will have a nice hole there if you if you don't have a nice hole there then you can use tools like like this to ream the hole out very delicately I prefer to do that than to use heat to hit it with the soldering iron again because the more you're hitting it with the desoldering iron and soldering iron the more likely you can blow these pads and burn the pads there's these little pads that are attached to the board so if you apply too much heat for too long you can cause those things to lift off and then you've got traces that are messed up on the board and then you have to work around that so it's it's a real art to knowing how long to hold it when when it liquefies to the proper point hitting that wiggle it pull and it's a nice little coordinated dance you have to do the more you do it the more comfortable you'll get at it and and the more capable you get the quicker you can do it which means the less heat you're subjecting to the board and possibly damaging components so you just got to keep working at it it might not be a bad idea to get some old dead circuit board and just play around with trying to remove things obviously though it'd have to be an older thing because surface mount stuff doesn't work like that that's a whole different dynamic so in this case i've got so now that i've got this one out i'm going to unconnect that and i'm going to hold on to this last remaining capacitor and let's remove that so and turn my soldering gun off, so I hope it's I hope it's hot enough. Double triple check where that is. Okay. And before you do anything, take pictures. Take pictures of the back of the board. Take pictures of the front of the board. The reason for this is um, let's let's look. In fact, let's look at a case of this. Sometimes you'll see. Little traces like this, dot, 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 right? Is that pad connected to the adjacent line around it, or is it isolated? Sometimes if you, if you put too much solder on, you can, you can short this to that. And you may think, oh, it was always like that. It was, or it, it was, you can't tell if it was or wasn't supposed to. So good idea is always to take pictures of the back so you can see. And of course, you can use your meter right here. With, on continuity to test if there's any ambiguity. But I like to take pictures of the front and the back, of course, and also making notice of the orientation of the capacitors. They'll be positive and negative when you're, when you're um, working on these um, polarized electrolytic capacitors. The little indentation side is positive, and there's also an arrow pointing to negative. So you, and, and, and there is no rhyme or reason to the orientation on a board. Here's one that's positives this way and then the one next to it the positives the other way so never assume they're all symmetrical it's very rare when they are so I'm going to remove this last little piece and you can see there's solder on the top side of it too so it's going to I'm going to I'm going to make sure that this solder is fully heated up before I hit the sucker and then I'll pull this out and hopefully it'll come out nice and clean so let's let's see hopefully my desoldering iron is hot enough okay. and sometimes if the uh, lead is sticking out and it's not straight you can straighten it before you begin okay so I'm, I'm gonna be pulling lightly so I'm watching it I've got the heat I can feel it there we go and it's out Bam. so I was just lightly pulling while I was applying the heat once this started to move, I hit the sucker and sucked all the solder out. So now let's take a look at that hole and see how good it is. I can't even remember where it was. It's right up here. My eyes are so bad. Let me hold it up to the light. Okay, I see it. Sorry, it was right, was right here next to this one. And you can see there's a nice clear hole through there. And then this one, the other side, looks like the hole is there too, but it's a little bit compressed. So what I will do 
I'll put this little tool in and I'll just if I don't have to sand it I'll just push through a little bit be very gentle so now we've got it and uh, I got a picture that I can refer back to but I can also look on the board sometimes and you'll see the positive is this side so these two are in the same orientation there's a little plus right there C52 so I've got my capacitor right here and again always check check to make sure this was uh, 10 microfarads 50 volts 10 microfarads 50 volts um, you can see that and that's what this is 10 microfarads. so I'll put that in and then we saw it now sometimes sometimes these boards the solder just won't liquefy very easily. Sometimes uh, it's too oxidized and you're not making a good contact on it. And sometimes there's different weird compounds in the solder that may um, require higher temperatures or they just kind of harden and become difficult to re-liquefy over time. Um, what you can do there is introduce a little bit of solder to the pad fresh, then go back to desoldering it. That's a very effective method. So, there you have it, simple desoldering using a, a solder gun, and, and the price of these things I think are under $200. Um, the amount of time and trouble that you'll save, it's absolutely worth it, you know. So I, I, I can't recommend them enough. Again, just takes some skill, you're going to have to, you're going to have to work on it uh, and, and, and master it. And I'm going to continue to clean all of this up. So, thanks you. Thanks everybody for watching and be sure to subscribe YouTube slash pinball help and visit the website pinballhelp.com until next time.